my dear viewers, beginning today is the official Alliteration Gaming Patreon and channel members. Throughout my Patreon, we've got quite a few tiers you can check out in order to gain special perks and even commission videos that you'd like to see me upload onto the channel. Every tier includes a shout out on my supporter card at the beginning of all of my videos, along with the benefits of the tier itself. Following that, you can now also join the Alliteration Nation by becoming a channel member on the YouTube side of things. Pledging your subscription here as a member of the channel is going to grant you the same shout out on my supporter card as all the Patreon tiers do, as well as access to the members only channel on my Discord. You'll gain a member badge that will level up as you stay subscribed and access to my exclusive emotes when I stream on YouTube. If you're interested in checking out the Patreon, I'm going to have the link in the description and in the pinned comment down below, as well as the link to my Discord should you want to join that as well. And if you want to become a channel member, the big beautiful join button is front and center on my homepage right here. And if you do decide to support the channel in any way whatsoever, know that I am unimaginably grateful and I can't wait to provide you with even more top-notch content at my trademark top speed. Now, let's get on to the video. Good evening, my dear viewers. Welcome to another Alliteration Gaming video. My name's Levi and today this character spotlight is actually going to be brought to you all by one of my patrons, Thomas Redman. I thought I knew for sure what my mission was going to be when Thomas's name popped up in the character spotlight tier, but his selection threw me for a loop when he told me that I was actually going to be having the pleasure of talking about one of the most slept on, underplayed characters in the whole roster, Yuga Aoyama 2. Dot. Aoyama's second incarnation in the My Hero Academia CCG is a 7 hand sized character with 20 health. He's got the air, death, and evil symbols. A very intense lineup for such a sweet guy. I wonder if there might be something more to that. His first enhance is incredibly simple. You trade one health for one speed. Not the most mind blowing ability, but a really viable stat exchange regardless. The only drawback? It can only be applied to mid attacks. Interesting. Aoyama's other enhance is a little more complicated in how it operates, but it's going to have very similar results. Once per turn, you can send away one foundation that's sitting in your card pool straight into your momentum to pack three damage on, once again, a mid attack. Why the focus there? Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, Ayama's naval laser comes right from his tummy, or his midsection. Huge props to the design team for that layer of flavor, but can we give as much props to his effectiveness? One health for one speed is a great trade, but as a 7-hander with only 20 health, we have to make sure we're applying that enhance only when it won't come back to bite us. If we use our laser too much, our stomach will start to hurt and we'll just lose to ourselves. On the other end of things though, 3 damage is no joke of a pump, especially when it's on a character that can also apply speed. Now, it doesn't come for free, not by any means. Having to play our attacks on plus 1 progressive essentially after we play our foundation is a very real cost, but the damage reward is really great. Not to mention, we're also getting on demand momentum out of it. This is going to give you access to a lot of real scary stuff much, much quicker than other decks can, so your rival is going to have to be very wary of your aggression. Now all these stats sound really great, but using the abilities repeatedly throughout our turn cycles is going to tax both our hand size and our health pool. So let's take a look at what cards we should be looking to include inside of our decks that are going to help us get the most benefit out of these enhances while also looking to mitigate their drawbacks. First off, let's talk the attacks. Given how Aoyama interacts with his moves, it's only natural that we'll want to include most, if not only, mid attacks inside of our decks. So for this first slide, let's just keep things real simple. We want to be shoving all of the best generic mid attacks in the game into our decks. Being soft locked into mids means we can't reach into certain archetypes incredibly well, but our symbols are still packing a lot of great generic ones that we can jam non-stop. Electric Jolt is probably the best poke in the game. Piercing Needle lets us manipulate our stats to no end, and all Twisting Azure Inferno needs to come online is a 3 damage pump, and uh, that's something Aoyama can immediately supply. Now, let's discuss some attacks that interact really well with our character. Maneuvering Laser was literally made for us, so of course it's going to be a must include in our deck. Setting itself up for our foundation consuming enhance and applying even more stats on its own, this thing becomes so massive in our deck so fast. Not to mention it has EX, so we can put that momentum to use right away. Point Blake Incineration is another move that can find some pretty real value when you're playing so many mid attacks. and. 
If you're worried about being too predictable, Sudden Death Assault will punish your rival for holding only those mid blocks. It's even also got two ways that we can make use of instant momentum. Speaking of, let's really look at the power of that aspect of Aoyama's skills. Speed and damage pumps are going to be great on any attack, but what really makes Yuga special is turning every momentum costed power online from the moment you begin attacking. Take a look at some of these otherwise fairly unassuming attacks. Electric Surge can immediately become a 5 mid for 10 with its own enhance. Slashing Whirlwind only needs one momentum to become a 6 mid for 17. Flamethrower instantly becomes 11 damage with our enhance and a snap powerful use with a lot of potential for even more speed with its own abilities. These are all very, very serious stats to think about, especially right away on turn 2. Being able to turn EX and power on very easily and very early can catch your rival off guard and they might find themselves eating a lot of laser damage. Now, I did dismiss certain archetypes earlier, but charges on air and punches on death both actually have a surprising amount of mid attacks that work really well within Aoyama. Tummy Ache Laser and Palm Strike are really well statted moves that also both sport powerful. So you can actually dedicate to these packages and still take advantage of some very seriously powerful mid combo attacks like Double Jab Pummel and a Gale Force Punch. Just make sure you drink plenty of Pepto-Bismol before throwing out a 7 difficulty Gale Force. That was a whole lot of attacks to stomach, huh? So let's settle down now and take a look at some of these foundations that sync up really well with what Ayama wants to do. Midnight's Assistance is our feature foundation here, being able to fuel our own enhance for free and garner even more stats in the process. But that's not where things end. Malday can do the same exact thing while fueling your hand with even more attacks. And window shopping is a ton of fun in our character to do because even if it finds a foundation on top, we still don't mind playing it for free to then follow up with an attack to make use of Aoyama's ability. For such a unique character, finding these interactions that support our strange mechanics is a lifeline for Aoyama 2 decks. We spent most of our time during the attack session talking about how strong that snap momentum was, and that sentiment will carry over into our foundations too. Immediately turning on requesting assistance means our early game can get as greedy as it comes, and shock treatment can turn every free momentum charge into the ability to pin down any key resources our rival might be reliant on to save them from our massive attacks. Meanwhile, our checks to play said massive attacks or to block and preserve our small health total are going to be a breeze to pass when both Cool Student and Nothing to See here are buffing them all the way. So even if we're not eager to cash out on things like EX are powerful just yet, we can still include a ton of utility in our deck to make use of all of those momentum charges. Speaking of preserving our smaller health total, let's talk defense. Death and Evil are not exactly known for their spectacular blocking, but there's still a handful of speed reduction that we can bring in through things like Graceful Maneuver and Shock Absorption. The Air Symbol, of course, though, packs some of the best speed hate in the game through stuff like Rescue Completed and Specialist of Sound. On top of that, defensive tactics like wall cling, release, or struggling with studies are going to make sure we're blocking non-stop and keeping us in the game to stay. 20 health is not a massive total, especially when we're cutting into it constantly for our speed pump, so we want to make sure that our stage just stays loaded up with cards that can protect us. Now, while air is king of protecting that health, death and evil are going to offer us plenty of ways to play around with it. Excited for blood is an indomitable source of healing, and coupled with super regeneration, we're going to be able to replenish our health non-stop even if we can't block particularly well. Bench press is a great additional source of healing as well, but given that we're going to be cutting our health for speed all day, we probably want to keep it face up so we can use that free damage pump on it non-stop. Quick to act is also another very noteworthy card here, since with so much ability to control our health in this deck, it is practically conditionless. Aoyama 2 also plays very well with cards that help pad out our checks a little. We talked about Cool Student earlier, but Battle Arena can find a lot of similar mileage in this character when it comes to passing those checks to play our attacks after we've played our foundations. And charge even more momentum for the tons of momentum outs inside of your deck. First Day of Class and League Interview also interact very nicely in this deck since their check pump specifies your next check to play an attack. 
meaning you can send a foundation in first, then follow it with an attack and still receive your bonus. Action wise, there aren't any that go too crazy in Aoyama, but I've still included a few nice generic ones across his symbol that could easily justify their way into his decks. Ready, Set, Go is pretty great in just any seven hander and Evil Gaze and Go for the Win are fantastic speed pumps on our big damage moves. That's gonna conclude our showcase today on Yuga Aoyama 2. Thanks again to Thomas Redmond for commissioning this video, and if you enjoyed or even learned anything from it, I would appreciate some feedback via the like button, and if you want more content like this, the subscribe button is what you really want to be hitting. And if that doesn't do it for you quite just yet, you can also join the channel and become a channel member, supports my work even more, and scores you some sweet perks like badges and emotes when I stream on YouTube. And if you want to commission a video just like this yourself, you can check out my Patreon to select your very own character for me to cover or any of my other tiers as well to further show your support for the channel. I'm going to have the links to everything in the description and in the pinned comment below. Above all else though, thanks just for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. But that's all the time I've got for today. I hope I can see you in the next one though.